And joining us for a further look on what's playing itself out on that market scene is Kobus Sportgita from Southern Class Capital. Kobus, thank you so much for being with us today. It's always a pleasure. Well, thank you for having me, Nolotandu. All the best for 2024. Same to you, uh, Kobus. Uh, we're looking forward to it. And I think a uh, very upbeat day today. So maybe you bring all the greens for us, Kobus, because it's the first day in a long time uh, that I'm looking at these screens and I'm seeing uh, just all green. Look, it's a, it's a relief, really, more than anything else. I think this market is so beaten down. Um, and there was due a bit of a, a, bit of a bounce. Um, the one little bit of positive news is that it seems that uh, uh, the Chinese government's indicating that they might be moving towards a bit of stimulus. And uh, the market is sort of refocusing on earnings season in the U.S. as opposed to, you know, purely focusing on rates and thus far it hasn't been as bleak a picture as expected. So I think it's, it's you know, sort of a pause and see from this. Uh, the market seems to think it has sold off sufficiently up to now. Also what we're seeing is a bit of strengthening uh, from the RAND, uh, the, you know, low, maybe uh, breaching that $19 uh, dollar to the mark again. Uh, and I'm keen to get your thoughts on that and what's happened uh, with the RAND. It's not quite the strength thing we're looking for. I think we're certainly looking for more. Uh, but I think at this point, Aquabus will take it. Yes, the rent's quite cheap. Um, and again, that was, you know, effectively down to this rates expectation tapering. You know, every Reserve Bank uh, member, or excuse me, you know, Fed member and his mother was uh, telling us uh, uh, to not expect uh, cuts too aggressively. And what happens then is the dollar strengthens significantly yeah. off the back of that expectation that that interest rate differential will, uh, won't be as attractive as it's going to be, you know? So why would you... A trade, you know, pursue the carry in the in in South Africa when you can get four percent, five percent short term rates in uh, um, in the U.S. itself for uh, for the next couple of years. So I, I think as sort of you know, some, a lot of this weakening was just a knee jerk there, and I don't think we had any particular focused uh, systemic issue or negative news. You know, I mean, any uncertainty around elections and the like that still. Uh, um, that's still somewhat, you know, that was already in the price. And uh, um, and ultimately, um, I don't think, I think we were just exposed to, to what's happening out there in the world as opposed to the sentiment, you know, locally. And some of that's just tapering off and selling back a bit today. And, that, and again, relief really more than anything else. I know uh, markets are forward-looking, uh, Corbus, and I'm wondering if markets have uh, tried to really uh, get ahead of themselves in terms of uh, this interest rate cut story. It's such a risky environment uh, throughout the, uh, the globe. We don't know what will happen uh, in the Middle East. And I'm wondering if uh, that is something that has been adequately priced in to date, uh, you know, that uh, that situation could really change the inflation trajectory globally. Uh, and these interest rate cuts uh, would have to be delayed even further than what we currently anticipate. That's a very difficult one. Mm -hmm. The market, certainly in terms of the current pricing, doesn't believe that that's a, a likely scenario. Um, the market seems to think that the players, other than the beauty extremists, uh, will remain, you know, sort of level-headed. And uh, the, I think the scary thing that's happened in the last 48 hours would be, of course, uh, uh, Iran striking mm -hmm. uh, terrorists being housed in Pakistan, and then uh pakistan reciprocating by doing the same um in iran but this is very very i mean if you understand the sort of geographies yeah. um of those countries you'll you'll know you know they are vast and mountainous and there are regions of those countries that are not under government control at all and that is where these strikes are taking place and of course these regions are unfortunately uh you know the subject to you no know, authority and tend to be breeding grounds for um, uh, for things like the Taliban. So there's this reasonable restraint at the moment. Uh, you know, whether or not Iran continues to funnel weapons and money to the Houthis, that could continue to destabilize the region. But I think what you're describing is the prospect of, a, of an escalation, maybe a scenario where we actually see, you know, national interests uh, or, or actual 
actual countries uh, waging war on one another. And the market doesn't seem to think that's that's a real risk at the moment. Certainly not in the oil price, and certainly no, in, in no other price. Uh, even in shipping, it looks like the market thinks that this is going to be quite temporary, the disruption that we are experiencing. And maybe maybe there's a belief that uh, the U.S. can contain the uh, the disruption being um, being born on, on on the Red Sea, um, but for the moment, the market, like I said, the market doesn't think this will escalate to that level at all. It's not it's not that forward looking, or at least in terms of how, as forward looking as it is, it's not on the price. Got that. I think uh, a bit of a relief, and I hope the markets are right because it really, we really can't afford uh, more shocks. I think specifically uh, at South Africa. I'm also keen to get your thoughts on what we might be seeing uh, with the news of a Xi in IPO. Now we know that uh, currently uh, the Chinese uh, cyber space authorities are looking into Xi in for its own reasons. Maybe that's not really the story with Xi in. Xi in gearing itself up for an IPO in the United States. I'm keen to get your thoughts on whether we are seeing an IPO environment, uh, or if it also happens sometimes quibbles that companies just grow so much uh, that listing is the next best step and uh, you know the the market environment uh, can't be the determining factor mm, it's curious but i mean we've also seen these these chinese companies um delaying listings ultimately when they realize you know uh, the market's not going to going to be that accommodative so I, I agree with you um you know management tends to be tactical um in terms of how they time these things and and now certainly is not the time um there's there's a lot of uncertainty and the ratings are pulling back and i, I think look we, we're just at that stage in the cycle um seeing the motors performance um update this morning you know increasing revenue but decreasing earnings by by um, 25 or between 20 and 30 uh, percent, we we at that stage we the enduring high rates are starting to starting to squeeze and it's starting to weigh on sentiment. So uh, it, yeah, there's some argument to be made if you're in an environment with total secular growth um, to pursue this, but ultimately they do pursue this um, as sort of a marketing exercise. Uh, the onshore listing, yeah, they don't really need the capital, so. Um, why do this in an environment where you're not going to get that that shiny polished launch mm. you know uh, that i don't fully understand i also ask you then about richmond and the news coming out of there it looks like it's been uh, a better one for richmond richmond had a beating a bit at the end of 2023 but i think with these numbers out uh, markets uh, may uh, be able uh, to uh, you know invest back into the stock yeah, oh, it's uh, rallied near 10%. And I, and I guess one should mention that this doesn't look like the most stellar set of results, but we had the likes of Burberry and a couple of other um, luxury consumer brands reporting in the last two weeks and showing very, very depressing numbers. So uh, so them coming out and, you know, something that's uh, dis dis displaying something that's ahead of slightly ahead ex of expectations, and then very particular, the uh, the jewelry um, masonry segment did very very well, way ahead of expectations, and most of it was driven by China and Hong Kong. Mm. They had an excess of twenty five percent constant currency growth in those regions, which is of course where a lot of the pain was coming from, and where a lot of the growth was coming from in the previous heydays um, for these uh, for these luxury consumer goods stocks. So, I mean, one one must mention more than half of their earnings do come from jewellery, um, and the balance mostly comes from these luxury watches. That market is still very suppressed. They saw less than three percent growth in that market globally. Of course, there was a bit of a hype during again the low rates uh, low rates phase and you know uh, these watches were all the rage and the price increases being pushed through on these watches were incredible um, and, and that the company managed to maintain those volumes um, as they were increasing prices so aggressively and suddenly that sort of t that trend sort of turned around and they saw a decline in volumes mm -hmm. but being reasonably defensive was uh, was seen by the market as a positive outcome. Mm -hmm. And most of the analysts before the market opened actually thought that this was an okay statement. Mm -hmm. um, and then it rallies almost 10%. Mm -hmm. So it, it shows you that against this backdrop of underperforming, uh, underperforming luxury stocks, this is a very good result and the market likes it. Welcome. That's all we have time for today. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And I know we'll catch up again soon. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cool. Fantastic. That was Corbus Borghita from Southern Cross at Capitol.